everybody get your Bibles open uh, to the book of Judges, chapter 2. Uh, tonight, we're going to have a good, good time here in this, and I want you to uh, get, a, get a thought that I want to get from my heart right into yours. Don't forget to pray for all those that couldn't be here tonight uh, because of work schedule or gone or vacation or whatever. Um, don't forget, uh, we're going visiting Saturday morning, 9.30. We need some help on the bus routes, all of them. We also uh, want to pray for Brother Joey Biddick. So I didn't mention him, and Joey's had a hard time lately and been sick a lot. They had to take him to the doctor again Sunday morning that was going to come to church. So don't forget that. But uh, don't forget to pray for these. All right, Judges chapter 2. Now tonight, uh, I'm going to do this a little bit different than I've been doing. Instead of going verse by verse, we're going to take section by section in this chapter, try to hit it all, and and... And look at it. As you know, the book of Judges teaches many truths, but one big great truth, and that is this. People get worse and worse and worse if God don't help them. And that's what they call the second law of thermodynamics in science. In science, the second law of thermodynamics means if you don't dust this thing right here, it'll get dirty. If you don't wash your car, it gets uglier and uglier. If you don't Brush your teeth or fix your hair. <laughs> you just go from bad to worse. And you're falling apart. Everything falls apart by itself unless there's an outside force intervenes. You know, my watch here, it runs by, this one runs by movement. If you take this watch off and don't mess with it, it'll stop. And I can put it on my arm, shake it a little bit. It's running perfect right now. But if I just set it down and don't touch it, it quits. That's the way, that's the law of, second law of thermodynamics. That's how you know for a fact that evolution is backwards from the truth. Because things don't get better, especially by their self. Things get worse left alone. So the, judge, the book of Judges teaches that. Now, the, book, the second chapter is parenthetical. What does that mean? That means... The second chapter didn't happen after the first chapter. Stuff in the second chapter happened back in Joshua. It records the book, death of Joshua in this chapter, and Joshua died back there at the end of Joshua. So it's just going over right here before Judges starts, and the Lord raised up Judges. So with that in mind, we're going to learn a great truth tonight. And the great truth I'm going to give you tonight is, if you want a happy, blessed enjoyable life, get all the sin out of your heart and life that you can possibly get out. Drive it out. When he sent them people in there, he said, drive out those evil inhabitants. And every problem they had come from not driving them people out. And mine and your problem comes from not driving the sin out of our hearts and life. Somehow or another, we convince ourselves, or the devil convinces us, that we'd be better off to keep a little bit of sin here and a little bit of sin. And I've done, I ain't fussing at y'all. I'm the same way you are. I want to hold on to this. You know, you think, my goodness, I quit doing all that. A little bit over here, you know, or a little bit back here. And that's what, that's what destroyed the children of Israel. So tonight, the lesson is, drive it out or it'll drive you out. You kill it or it'll kill you. In war, you know what war is? Kill them or they'll kill you. And uh, like General Patton said years ago, when them guys going into war, he said, we're not sin he said, your job ain't to die for your country. Your job is to make the other guy die for his country. That's true. When you go to war, you say, no, I'm going to die for my country. No, you're going to make the other guy die for his country. And that's what war is. So we're not going to, and we're not living in this life to let sin kill us. We're living our life sin for kill sin. Now, it's going to get you in the end either way. But you'll be a whole lot happier, holier, live better and longer if you'll drive it out. All right. Ready with that? Verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never... Break my covenant with you. Talking to the children of Israel. Right off, the bat, right off the bat, we run into the doctrine of angels. An angel of the Lord. Now, briefly, we could take two or three weeks and study angels in the Bible. But briefly, it's this. An angel in the Bible 
is an appearance. It's an appearance. When it says an angel of the Lord, it's an appearance of the Lord. And many times, the angel of the Lord is the Lord. Now, there are lots of angels that ain't the Lord, but when it says the angel of the Lord come to Sodom, it was the Lord and two other angels. So, an angel is ministering spirits. Now, without a long, big, long thing, Every angel in the Bible appears as a young male. There are no female angels in the Bible. There are no blonde-haired angels in the Bible. There are no angels with wings in the Bible. That wing stuff comes from tradition, and it comes as a Catholic tradition passed down, and those seraphims and cherubims, and some of them creatures have wings, but no angels. When they come, listen, when they come to Sodom, they saw two young men. When they saw a young man, they couldn't tell the difference in them and other young men unless their clothes or their face shone a little bit brighter. So is everybody straight on this? We're a Bible-believing church. So I, I, I don't, angels are male. I'm not saying that because I'm a male. I'm saying that because the Bible teaches it. Right? God the Father is male. God the Son is male. God the Holy Spirit is male. They had a big statue up in up north some time ago, and they said, we're going to unveil this statue of Jesus, some big Lutheran Catholic, well, and they pulled down the thing, and it was Jesus as a woman. And uh, I'll tell you who made that in just a second. Uh, if you're a woman that loves God, are you listening? If you're a woman that loves God and believes the Bible, you have absolutely no problem with the Bible saying God is male. It don't bother you a bit. You say, well, I just thought there's something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Or something you're, you know what I think you are? I think you're jealous. <laughs> they make Bible, they've made Bible versions now that take out the gender. And now they're saying God is a she and now they're saying is it's an it and because they don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. We've come to the point in this country where you can't even state a truth without somebody getting offended or getting their feelings hurt. Uh, let's, uh, if you're a woman that loves God, it does not bother you one bit that God and angels, all angels, are male. You say, well, I think it, okay, let me prove a point. You ain't never heard nobody say what I'm getting ready to say. If you have, tell me. Let's be fair about it. If angels are female, then demons are too, right? The devil should be a, a female. I ain't never heard them fuss about that. I've never heard anybody say, well, it's not fair. Uh, the devil's a male. Uh, it's, it's sexist. Okay, let it be a she-devil then. There are a lot of them. You never think... <laughs> Preach it, son. I'm telling you tonight. Listen, cut the mustard, amen. Uh, if, if, if angels can be female, so can demons. See, is, is the devil a she? Let's write a new Bible and say, she was that old serpent, she say it was cast into the lake of fire. You know, uh, how come the false prophet and the antichrist is never pictured as a woman? The antichrist is always a him. The devil is a him. In Revelation 20 and verse, him, verse 2, said it took him and cast him into the lake of fire and on the chain game for a thousand years. So the person who made that statue is jealous. Why they're jealous, I don't know. Uh, don't be jealous of us, y'all. One, one lady said, well, it's not fair. Uh, we have to submit to you. And I said, well, it's, it, is, it ain't fair. We have to love you enough to die for you. That's just as hard as you submitting. Loving a grouch enough to die for is just as hard. Lord have mercy, y'all. Do we need, a, we need to just stop and have an old-fashioned invitation tonight? No, I'm just kidding. But, it, I mean, it's hard. Man got to lay down his life for his right. Right? That ain't fair. How come you don't have to die for us? 
See, the Lord's not unjust. He made me a man. I'm thankful he did. Shut my mouth and be the best one I can be. If he made you a woman, thank God you ought to be the best one you can be for the glory of God. Quit whining about every little old thing in the world being sexist and racist and prejudiced. And I get sick of hearing that. You can't move without somebody saying, oh, you know, uh, you know I, somebody said something about me the other day. Brother Danny, can you still do it? I said, is that an old joke? You know, everything, it's an, you're making fun of me because I'm old. You know, well, good night, y'all. Uh, grow up a little bit. Uh, the, the, an angel of the Lord is there. How come Judas, the man that betrayed Christ, couldn't have been a woman? Let's be fair about it. Judy. <laughs> Judy, Judy betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. If your name's Judy, I, don't, I just said that because it sounds like Judas. Um, well... Anyway, uh, don't be jealous of men. If you're a man, don't be jealous of a woman. Be the best man you can be and sh shut up and forget about it. Uh, honor God. Now, with that being said, let's go into verse 2. 2-2. Two, two. Judges 2-2. Two, two. And you shall make no league. Look at that now. That's Christ there's Christian teaching here, back here in Judges, with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars. <whistles> nice, loving, tolerant bunch of people there. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Now look, he said, verse 3, I will not drive them out before you. They shall be as thorns in your side, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. So the Lord said this, and I want you to keep your finger on verse 2. The Lord said this. He said, I want you to go in there. And he said, I want you to drive them people out. They worship false gods. They're into all kind of sexual perversion. There's diseases. Animals and people got the same disease. Same thing's going on in the United States tonight, right now, while I'm preaching. Uh, they got, they're spreading it all over the place. People are dying. People are screaming. Uh, war, get them out. Get rid of them. Don't leave that much. Don't leave that much. Get rid of them. Throw down their altars. Don't worship their God. And Israel decided not to do it. And verse 2 said, why have you done this? I thought, man, I'm going to preach on that. Lord, have mercy, I need to preach on that. Why have you done this? You want that in your language? You still go to clubs? You still listen to dirty music? You still watch dirty movies? Why have you done this? The Lord said, drive that stuff out. Why have you done this? I mean, I'm preaching to all of us tonight, y'all. Why would you make a league with people that hate God and that will destroy you? You know what he said? He said, I'm going to leave them with, with what, thorns in your side. Is he, have you ever had a thorn in your side? Like a splinter? Man, I can feel good all over, but if I got a splinter right there, all my tears, God, I hate that thing. Oh, oh, oh. And you try to dig it out and pull it out, and it gets infected and everything. That's what sin will do in your life if you don't get rid of it. Yeah. You ever had a thorn in your side? Something stuck in you right here? You know, I can be happy and healthy, blood pressure right and everything, but if I've got a big thorn in my side, that's going to ruin my day. I'm going to lay down and go to sleep tonight. Had a good meal? Yep. Got a headache? Nope. Got any anybody? Nope. Got a thorn in the side. What's that? Dirty movies. Movies with naked people in it and cussing and taking God's name in vain will be a thorn in your... You say, now, preacher, you're so old-fashioned. No, you're so crazy that you, you've done, you need to get lined up with the Bible because you know God don't want you looking at stuff like that. Y'all, come on, man. You know good and well God don't want you to look at stuff like that. And there's people sitting right here in this church tonight. You look at stuff on your phone. You look at stuff on your... I mean, it's tempting, buddy, when you know, something pops up there. And out of curiosity, I wonder what that is. That's the devil talking to you right there. Amen. You better know what you're looking at. And if you can't get it under control, fast and pray a while. You know what old Sam Jones said? Sam Jones says you keep just as much sin in your life as you want to keep. He said if you want rid of it, you'll get rid of it. If you want to quit drugs, you can quit them if you want to bad enough. If you want to bad enough, uh, listen, I, I learned some lessons the hard way, y'all. I've learned some hard lessons the hard way. And, buddy, I made up my mind by the grace of God, if a devil ever tries to put some kind of sin, I'll, I'll go to the woods and take me a bottle of water and the Bible and get down on my knees and I'll pray till God gets that out of you. I advise you to do the same thing. 
You know what it'll do? It'll destroy you. The wages of sin is death. It'll kill you. How many of us know people? They kept on drinking. They kept on partying. They kept on, wound up in jail. Wound up in jail. You think you're so cool. You're so smart. Nobody can tell you nothing. You got it all figured out. We know. You're the genius. 99,000 people have failed. You'll be the one that's smart enough to, to handle sin. No. You know what God said? Drive them out. Out. If you're flirting around with somebody at work and you're not married to them and you shouldn't and they're married and you're married or whatever, you know what you better do? You change jobs, go to the mountains, whatever you've got to do, and get down and say, God, get it out. And you can get to the place where you don't even want that. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, drive them out. Now, you know what he said? Since you wouldn't, verse 3, I'll let them be thorns in your side. And their gods will be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, verse 4, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. That's what you need to do tonight. Come up here and bawl your eyes out and say, God help me. And they called the name of that place Bokim, for they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man into his inheritance possessed the land. See, that's what I'm saying. It's back in Joshua when this happened. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Now, watch this, another great spiritual truth. And Joshua, the son of Nun, means he didn't have a mom and daddy. Uh, he's Joshua, the son of Nun. Uh, the servant of the Lord died, being 110 years old. Notice that the ages of people got lower and lower. Back in the days of Noah, 600, 800, 900. After the flood, the atmosphere changed, and all that water knocked that protective shield up that, that's why there's fish fossils up on top of Mount Mitchell uh, and places like that because the world went under the flood and now people started living less and less and less. Old Joshua only made it to 110. Nowadays, if somebody makes it to 110, we think, my Lord, uh, I, don't, I don't really know if I'd want to be 110. I mean, I want to get old, but I don't want to be miserable. I want to be 90 and go up in the rapture. That would be great. Uh, and still feel good. That would be great. But uh, bad times coming for us if the Lord don't come for all of us. Uh, getting old stinks, buddy. Uh, if you don't, I don't mean that literally. I guess it does too. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, it it really does. It really does. Go into a rest home if you don't believe that. I, I feel I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for people getting old. And and I <laughs> I, I mean that really. It's awful. It's awful. Uh, but you ain't got no choice. Die or get old. I talked to a guy one time, he was a drunk out on the street, and I was witness to him, and I'd, I never forgot this, never forgot this. Brian, this guy, he, every once in a while, God lets you hear some profound statement, and I told this guy, I said, here you go, man, this will tell you how to get to heaven. He said, I won't go to heaven. He said, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. I said, that's right. He said, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. I'd like to know how the H they think they're going to get there. I said, you're right, man. You're right. <laughs> but he didn't say that. He said, I thought, that's right. How are you going to get there if you don't die? You got to die to get to heaven unless the Lord comes back first. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die or get old. But guess what? It's coming. And Joshua died, 110 years old. And they buried him in verse 9. Uh, and and then in verse and Timaris in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gash, and all like Gash that word there, and all their generation were gathered unto their fathers. Now here's what I want you to see, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Now look back there at verse number seven. It said them people in Joshua's day seen the great works that God did for Israel. Now, everybody look at that. Then in verse 10, another generation come up that didn't know the Lord, and they didn't see that stuff. And they did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Now, you know what that teaches? That teaches every generation gets worse and worse unless God does something in that generation. Isn't that true? Now, my generation, I did not see 
J. Frank Norris and Billy Sunday and Whitfield and Finney and Spurgeon and Moody. I wish I could have. I did not see them. I did get to see Roloff, Hiles, John Rice, Ruckman, all the, Billy Kelly, Ralph Sr., uh, Mays Jackson. I got to meet them guys, and all, I got all that rubbed off on me I could get. And then I've got to see several that things that God did. We've seen the great works of the Lord. I've, I've been in a few revivals. Uh, Carrie remembers some of them, but Jason, I remember some of them. Some of y'all uh, are in the revival we had in 1994. Uh, we saw the great works of the Lord. But you know what happened? It happens every time. Great churches are built when God does a work, and then that next generation comes up, and they ain't seen that. And they get a little more worldly, and a little more wicked, and a little more tolerant of sin, and a little more powerless. And then if God don't do something for them, that next generation is not. And that's why you got all these great churches around that used to be something special, and all them old people died off, and now they're dead. And a lot of them are just dying and going out of business. I hope and pray that never happens here. If the Lord don't come, I want God to do something in our generation, and I'd like to see God at camp week after next. Wouldn't it be great for them to see the great works of the Lord? And then our kids would grow up believing what me and you believe. Can I tell you this as a parent? I have people ask me all the time. There's a lady, every time I go down to down yonder somewhere there in Gastonia. She said, Brother Danny, I listen to you on the radio. She said, I love it when you tell the stories about your girls. When y'all, She said, I, I could listen to you tell about them. And she always says, if he can do it by himself all them years, then I can raise my kid. And you have people say, how in the world did you raise kids? How in did you do it? And, I, and I'll tell you how. I'm not a great parent. I am not. I tell you what I done. I kept them in church, and I kept them in revival, and I kept them in camp, and God did something for them. And every one of them, my girls ain't perfect, but every one of them know what's right, and they know the right feeling. They know the right spirit. They may not always live like they but they sure doesn't know when you ain't living right, and 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 I ain't living right. And I'm glad. I'm thankful that they got to see some of the works of the Lord, and I'm counting on that to get them through. I'm counting on when I die, my daughter's saying, I don't just believe what my daddy believed. I believe in the God that my daddy believed in. I believe the Bible my daddy believed in and have their own faith in their heart. Amen? That's what you got. When I die, I don't want them to say, oh, well, I ain't going back to church no more. I mean, you kill them if that happens. Shoot them. Let the air out of their tires. Follow them. They do it. And listen, I want them to say, listen, my daddy was right. But it ain't right because Daddy said it. It's right because God said it. And it's in that book right there. And that generation come up and didn't know the Lord. And, and the Bible said they forsook him and served Balaam. Now, Balaam is a uh, plural of a, a false Old Testament God, Baal. And Baal, of course, was a picture of Satan in the Bible. And uh, they talk about Balaam. And Ashtaroth, I believe Ashtaroth is in that verse there somewhere, ain't it? Yeah, verse 13. Isn't that interesting? Verse 13. Look at it. Rebellion. 13 is the number of rebellion. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. There's another one, Chanel. She's been doing a study on it, number 13. And like 85% of the 13s in the Bible are bad. It's the number of rebellion. That's why a kid, when a kid's 12, they're still a kid. And when they get 13, something happens, don't it? Does something happen or what? Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, some of them get it from the 12. And, uh, but anyway, look at verse number 12. They forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, the gods of the people that were round about them. Translated. Keeping up with the Kardashians. Desperate hoe wives of Atlanta. Uh, MTV, VH1, uh, Britney Spears, Beyonce. They serve the gods of the people. What are the gods of these people? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And it said these people serve their gods. 
make sure that your God is not the gods that this world has. I mean, what's the gods of this world? Money, drugs, sex, music, sports, right? Food, education. That's the gods that Americans worship. None of those are wrong in the right place. Any of them can be wrong out of place. You know, yeah, I was telling uh, uh, Dennis or Ethan today when we was playing ball, and I, said, I think it was Dennis, I said, you know, I like basketball. I love to play basketball. That's, I don't like to fish. I don't like to play golf. But I love, to, I love to play basketball. But it's not my God. It's not my God. I wouldn't drive to Charlotte to see ever NBA all-star player in the world if I was having to preach somewhere or I could do something for the Lord any day of the week. If we don't worship. And, and don't let your kids or teach your kids to worship idols like sports stars, y'all. Don't let... I mean, it's okay for little boys to have heroes. I mean, when used to kids, heroes was, you know, uh, uh, Matt Dillon, people like that growing up, and cowboys and all that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with them looking up to sports, looking up to them. But when you make a God out of stuff like that, it's anything you put in front of God is an idol and can be an idol. Anything. It can be your job. It can be your looks, ladies. It can be your money. It can be your bank account. It can be your hobby. It can be yourself. It can be your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Anything you put first ahead of God in your life can be an idol. And the Bible said they worship the gods of the people who were around them. In other words, do you know what they done? They went to a uh, Three Doors Down concert, and they went in there, and there was the people worshiping, and they went, yeah, just worship right in there. Well, which one's the Israelite and which one is worships Ashdod? You couldn't tell the difference. And that's the way Christians do. And, and that's the New Testament. Paul says, put away from among you. Put away from among you. Put away lying. Put away. This is New Testament doctrine in the Old Testament. There ain't no way men come up with this book right here. What I'm teaching you tonight, God told those children of Israel, is the very same thing Paul told the Galatians, the Ephesians, the Philippians, Colossians, and all. Get it out. Get it out or it'll mess you up. Get rid of the sin or don't have a little private sin that you keep holding on to that nobody knows about. Don't do it. I'm telling you, it'll grow like cancer. Don't have this little sin where you say, this one's mine right here. Nobody can come in this room. You can come in the living room. You can come in the, in the den. You come, But you can't come in here. This one's mine. You're not right with God. You say, well, I quit more than most people. Yeah, you have. But that ain't what the Lord said. He didn't say quit most of it. Quit your lying. Years ago, they used to have what they call quitting meetings. They did. Like we have a revival, them old preachers, old Methodist circuit riding preachers. Listen, some of them old mule skinning Methodist circuit riding preachers, they'd preach you in the floor, brother. And not, they're not like Methodists are nowadays. Lord, this bunch of Methodists nowadays, if John Wesley came back, like I say, he'd faint before he got past the third ashtray in a big shop Methodist church nowadays. They, them guys believed in holiness. Lord in mercy, they believe in hope. They, they almost believe too much in works as, as proof of your salvation. But they believed in living right. And they had quitting meetings. And they had a whole week of meetings just like we have a revival and everybody quits everything they're doing wrong. Are you, are you cussing? Lying? You know you can get in a habit of lying? Do you know your kids will lie to you? Pin them down. Are you lying to me? No. All right, look at me right in the eye. You tell me. Kids will lie, y'all. They will. And it, Man, it used to kill me when my girls would lie to me. It didn't happen much, but it did happen occasionally because they're scared. And they're scared because they're afraid of what I was going to do. And I always told them, I said, you get off easier if you just tell the truth. Get it over with. Tell me the truth. I broke it. I'm the one that busted the window out. I'm the one that uh, put the scratch on your car. I'm the one, just be honest and tell the truth, get it over with. That's another thing I've learned through the years. Face up on, just man up, just confess what you've done wrong, put it behind you, and then nobody can say nothing. Quit trying to lie out of it all your life. Uh, the Lord said, get them out. Verse 13, they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. That Ashtaroth 
female goddess uh, in the Old Testament. That's Mary worship. That's where the Catholic Church gets putting Mary up there like she's sinless. The Catholic Church teaches that Mary was sinless and never sinned and stayed a virgin her whole life. And oh, that's, that's ridiculous. That's in, insane to believe crazy stuff like that. But that's what they believe. That's Ashtaroth in the Old Testament. Ashtar, Easter. That's where we get that, that word Easter. And uh, uh, look at verse number 14. The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. I don't want that to be the Lord against me. And he delivered them in the hands of spoilers that spoiled them and their, into the hands of their enemies round about so they could not any longer stand before them. You know what God did when they kept sinning? He just said, I'll just take my protecting hand off of you and let your enemies beat you up a while. You say, did God do that? He sure did. I was telling Kelly, I said, we need to pray the Lord to keep his hand on me, on our house, on this church. If God pulled back his hand, the devil, he'd make mints made out of me, buddy, and you too. Now, you know what? You've heard me tell this before, and I don't know if I'll get through this tonight or not, but I go running, and I run down to Hopitom, and every, every, I don't go down there every day because I, I run in the gym this morning. When I'm running, I'm doing like this, and I'm on this road. I'm staying on this road, right? Here I go. I'm on the road going down up time. I'm a going down. And when it turns, I turn. It goes back that way. I turn back. And I'm a going. And about two-thirds of the way down there, there's this dog. And every day, ask them. Dennis has been going. Miss Gina has been going. Kelly has been going. Every day, that dog comes out of that thing. He's a, he looks like a little German shepherd, but he's about that tall. And he comes out of there like a bat out of the corner of the room. And son, he comes flying down there and showing his teeth. He's going to tear my leg off. And there's a path right back and forth there. He's tied up on a leash. And he can't go no further than that right there. And I, the first few times he did it, man, I went, oh, I kept on. And I grabbed the stick and I'm thinking, he's tied up. He can't hurt me. And me and Corey run. Corey called, uh, texted me all the time since she's living up there now. And said, uh, said Daddy, uh, they're staying at my mom's house till January sometime when they're building one, you know. And uh, she said, let's go running. So I meet her down at the mailbox and we run. And I told her, I told her the other day, I said, listen, watch this. I said, see, we're running. That dog can't hurt us. As long as we stay on this path, he can't hurt us. Now, if I get smart and I go over here and start messing with him, get over in his domain, He'd get me. And that's exactly what God was saying here. As long as you stay on the right path, he'll hold the devil off of you, y'all, as far as ruining your life. You get over here and messing around with things you ain't got no business messing with, you get bit. Bible said, whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. You get to mess around in the devil's territory, go to a nightclub, go to a, go to a party where there's drugs and drinking and stuff, you're going to get bit. You're a fool, man. Don't even know it. Now, young people think, I'm smart. I know better. Okay? Come back and tell me that in about 15 years from now. You'll say, I would to God I'd have never win. Would to God. You know what God said? Drive them out. 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 Get it out. You say, but I like this movie, brother. You know, you're addicted to movies. That's what you are. Most people are. Uh, listen, I got my problem, but movies ain't one of them. I ain't watched a movie in years. Uh, I mean, you can't watch the bad ones, they're wicked, and the other ones ain't no good. And so I just don't fool with none. I didn't mean it like that. I, <laughs> that didn't come out right. I mean, I mean, you know, I want some boring documentary or something. And those, there ain't no, that's, why, that's why people say there ain't nothing fit to watch on TV. That's true. It's either wicked or boring. And the devil's got them exciting movies. They got a lot of action and good stuff. And then they'll put that sin in there. Right? I mean, someone got a good plot, scary, have you on the edge of your seat, and then all of a sudden, they're taking God's name in vain, committing adultery right in front of you, and you enjoy watching it. And that ain't right. That is not right. You say, well, Brother Danny, don't Brother Danny me. You say, but you mean I'm going to have to quit? You ain't going to hell. Hush. You're not going to burn in hell. You'll be all right. Amen? You'll drive them out. Drive them out. Drive them out. You say, are you perfect? No. 
I sure ain't. But, but we don't watch dirty movies at our house. We don't do it. We just don't do it. By the grace of God, ain't going to. Now, I know the devil's hear me saying that, and he's going to hit me before I go home tonight. There'll probably be something come on. Boy, wouldn't you like to see that? But I'm telling you, you're better off to drive it out. You want to stand up here Sunday morning and have a clear conscience? You want to sing in this choir and feel the glory of God down on you? Drive it out. Drive it out. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it to be right. When, when hospital time comes, one of your kids is sick or, you, or your husband or your wife, you're going to say, God, I want to be able to get a hold of God. Be in touch. It'll be worth it to him. It'll be worth it. The devil's got a bunch of cheap candy that ain't no good. It'll just rot your spiritual teeth. Amen. Uh, go ahead, brother. No, they ain't angels. I don't know what them things are. <laughs> That's where they get that store coin brings a baby, I reckon. Uh, I studied that a long time ago. Tell him what that is, Brother Derek. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to check that out, Brother. That's Wonder Woman, I think. The, I've, I've seen it. They come out with a new Wonder Woman movie. and I, I remember the old Wonder Woman movie a long time ago. The old Wonder Woman, oh, what's her name? She was a very, very beautiful lady. I forget her name, Linda somebody. Linda Carter, that's her. She's probably dead and gone now. Uh, but the old, the original Wonder Woman, now that was a nice looking lady, I'm telling you. She was beautiful. But I saw the, I didn't see the movie, but I saw the advertisement. This new one, you can't hold up to the old one. But she, can you imagine what old Linda Carter looks like right now? She probably in rest home if she's still alive. So look at it like that. This new one will be in a few years too. <laughs> Is that right? Now, we know you as a player, Donna. I, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have a legend in our midst and didn't realize it. Who else had their, back here? Yeah, you know what? I think I heard that. I think I heard that. No kidding. Somebody, somebody don't look it up now. We're in church. But I, honestly, I think I heard that, but I'm not sure since you mentioned that, that she became a witch. Wonder what I did too. We don't know. You know, the truth is, Linda Carter probably didn't look that good if you'd have seen Linda Carter. In real life, everybody's got flaws. They can, they can fix you up for that camera. Uh, I've seen a, a few celebrities, but they, Lord, they look worse in person than they do on TV, uh, the ones that I've seen. All right. The, the lesson is tonight, run that sin. The less you sin, the better off you'll be. The less you sin and tolerate sin in your life, the more power of God will be on your life, the more you can get your prayers answered, the more blessed you'll be, the more happy you'll be. And I'm going to take it one more step further, the more healthy you can be. Now, don't get me wrong. If you can never sin again the rest of your life and still get sick or something bad happen. I mean, it, Job, but don't let your sin or sickness be the result of sin because sometimes it is. Well, you're going to get sick anyway. Please don't make it worse on you and you have to. Don't get a kidney stone just because you won't live right. Or don't get a, and I'm just threw that out there. I'm not saying kidney stone is a sign of sin. Anything can be, anything. Uh, man, I've had one of them things before. That's about the worst thing a man can get, heart attack. I mean, something, you're going to have something anyway. If you never sinned again the rest of your life, you're still going to have trouble and get old and sick and die. Why? Because you sinned all your life. And the wages of sin is death. All right, we're going to stop right there, y'all.